Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India NPTEL course environmental chemistry and microbiology. This course will be taught by Professor Shudha Guel and myself, Professor Anjali Pal. We are both from civil engineering department of IIT Kharagpur. We have divided this course into two parts. The first part is environmental chemistry that will be covered by me. And the second part is environmental microbiology that will be taught by Professor Shudha Guel. Now, in our module 1, we have discussed about the acids, bases, and salts. In module 2, I have discussed about chemical equilibrium, and in the module 3, I discussed about chemical kinetics. I have uh, told about the reaction rate, reaction order, how to determine the reaction order and also I uh, discussed about the differential rate law and integrated rate law. In this lecture, uh, I will cover the environmental chemical kinetics uh, under environmental chemistry and the mechanism of reactions. This is the part A and it is the lecture 16. Now, the lecture content here is molecularity, elementary reaction, unimolecular reaction, bimolecular reaction, termolecular reaction and chain reaction. You all know that in this in the general way we show a reaction a balanced by a balanced equation, but it is very important to know the mechanism of the reaction detailed mechanism of the reaction and to know the detailed mechanism we need to have the idea on these following topics that I mentioned here. Now, what is the molecularity and order? What is the difference between the molecularity and order of a reaction? Molecularity of a chemical reaction uh, usually we mean that in a balanced uh, equation the number of molecules that is reacting that is the uh, that is the molecularity of the reaction. And in that sense the reaction may be unimolecular where only one molecule is reacting then it can be bimolecular where, where two molecules are reacting it may be tar molecular where three molecules are reacting and earlier actually there we did not uh, distinguish between the molecularity and order of a chemical reaction. But now after the discussion of chemical kinetics uh, in the module 3 you all know that molecularity and order is not the same. And usually to mean the molecularity, we apply the term molecularity to explain the mechanism of a chemical reaction, but order you know we have no control, it is the experimental experimentally determined parameter and uh, it can be a fraction also, it can be uh, integer also, but molecularity is always a integer integral. Now, so we understand that molecularity and order are two different things for a chemical reaction. Now, in case of simple reaction or isolated reaction or elementary reaction, I will tell you about the elementary reaction, but that type of reactions where 
the reactants are directly transformed into products without any intermediate step there molecularity can be easily defined. Say for example, it is the simple reaction of hydroiodic acid, this is hydroiodic acid decomposition where two molecules of hydro hydroiodic acid is producing one molecule of hydrogen and one molecule of iodine. It is very simple here to and you can easily tell that it is because this is two. So, you can easily tell that this is a bimolecular reaction, but if you see the opposite reaction say for example, one molecule of hydrogen is combining with one molecule of iodine then producing two molecules of H i. Then if you see this reaction then also you can tell that opposite reaction is also a bimolecular reaction very simple to understand and it is directly it is going on that, that is why it is simple to understand. But incidentally they are also second order reaction, but it is not necessary that molecular molecularity and the um, order will be same it may be different also that we will discuss in this lecture. Now, uh, elementary what is elementary reaction this is very very important to know for to understand the mechanism of a chemical reaction what is elementary reaction. It is generally known that most of the reactions do not occur in a single step we know that uh, we have usually in early day in our school days we never bothered about the mechanism of a reaction we only only have shown the balanced equation, but now while talking about the mechanism we must consider the different steps various steps because many of the reaction most of the reactions they do not occur in a single step, but occurs through a series of steps may be 2 steps, 3 steps, 4 steps, 5 steps. So, each step is called an elementary reaction and is directly caused by the collisions of atoms, ions or molecules. We all know that a reaction cannot occur like that unless there is the collision and the, during the collision it has to uh, have a particular uh, threshold energy that is activation energy. So, a element in the elementary step when any elementary step uh, when it occurs it has to uh, fulfill that condition. Now, the rate expression of an overall reaction cannot be derived from, a stoi from the stoichiometry of the balanced equation. We cannot tell, we cannot uh, find out the order, we cannot write the rate expression just from the stoichiometry of the balanced equation and must be determined that is the order that is the unless we know the order we cannot tell the, uh, the rate expression, we cannot uh, uh, write the rate expression that is why. Uh, order is important and uh, to know the order we have to do the experiment. So, the rate of elementary reaction on the other hand elementary reaction means each step is called because one reaction can uh, can occur in several steps. So, two, three, two, two, three or four or five steps. So, each step is called the elementary reaction and is directly the rate of elementary reaction on the other hand is directly proportional to the product of the concentrations of the reacting species. That means, in elementary steps it is very easy to find out the molecularity of that particular elementary step. Each raised to the power to a power equal to its coefficient in the balanced elementary equation. So, if we see the elementary equation a balanced elementary equation then we can easily find out the rate expression for that particular elementary equation. There is no correlation, however, there is no correlation between the order and the molecularity of a reaction or between the stoichiometric representation and the molecularity. This we must understand ok. Usually we think that ok order is directly is, it is the same as the molecularity, but it is not the same. So, once order is uh, is not known then we cannot tell also the the rate expression ok. The every elementary step has its molecularity that that is what I told you. J every every elementary step 
you can uh, you can write you can find out the uh, find out the um, molecularity by writing the balance equation now here is an ex example what is the example it is the nitrogen pentoxide nitrogen pentoxide when decomposed it is producing no2 and oxygen it is a you can see here it is a balanced equation and you can see here here it is 2 stoichiometry is 2 that means you can easily tell you will tell uh, it is presumed that it is a bimolecular reaction but actually uh, and also by simple way if you tell that this is a second order reaction then you are not correct actually experimentally when we find out the order we see it is a first order reaction the reaction occurs why it is so why it is not matching because the reaction occurs by multiple steps some of which are bimolecular and one is unimolecular so and all the steps are not occurring in the at equal speed that is another thing someone is slow someone is fast so how to determine the molecularity and how to determine the order uh, order it is experimentally determined that is for sure but how to tell the molecularity that is very important thing and often although often it is observed that molecularity of the slowest slowest step is the order of the overall reaction. So, slowest step is a very important term to, to tell about the mechanism of a particular reaction. I will tell you later what does it mean. Now, different types of elementary reaction. If you tell the, that what is the elementary reaction, it is the slowest step, what does it mean? I will give you some idea. Okay. Say for example, you are going uh, to say for example, I am going from Kharagpur to Delhi. Okay. So, this is my route. So, uh, I will tell Kharagpur to Delhi, but to go from Kharagpur to Delhi, I cannot go directly there same as the re reaction. Okay. I cannot go directly from Kharagpur to Delhi. What I have to do? First, I have to I have to go to Kharagpur station by taxi or something. Then from Kharagpur station I have to catch a train to go to Kolkata, then from Kolkata to, um, to uh, airport we have to go and then from airport I will catch a flight to go to Delhi. Now, say for example, in this journey one step is very slow, say for example, the Kharagpur to Kolkata it say for example, it is a very slow moving train okay? and then it takes maybe 10 hours to go. Okay. So, and to, to if when you catch the flight to go to Delhi it takes 1 and half hours. Okay. So, the step which is the slow step that is nothing but the train slow moving train you are going from Kharagpur to Kolkata. Now, if you so it is altogether it is uh, it is taking too much time. Okay. Now, if you want to go fast then which step you have to consider? Uh, mostly means you have to uh, give you have to pay attention the slow step if you want to go fast the slow step which is taking more time that step you have to make fast so you have to either go by a car or you have to go by a fast moving train so that it takes only one hour time okay and then you you can say that okay I can reach Delhi in a very uh, a small uh, time period. Okay. So, that means, the slowest step is the governing factor to, un, to, to tell you whether the overall process is fast or slow and that is, that is the same thing here. Now, I will tell you the, um, the um, first the what are the different molecularity based on the molecularity what are the different reactions. Okay something like unimolecular reaction. So, what is uni, uni means one we know. So, unimolecular reaction uh, involves a single reactant molecule and usually occurs after at least one bimolecular step. Why it is written here after at least one bimolecular step this is very important, but easy to visualize say for say for example, there is one molecule. So, 
to to go for some reaction to do some reaction to take part in the reaction if it is just one molecule it will not be involved in some molecular uh, uh, not in reaction ok. So, to take part in the reaction it must collide with some other molecule may be same molecule means um, same molecule means similar molecule or it may be a different molecule ok. Uh, otherwise it will not it will not uh, go for reaction this is very easy to under visualize ok. So, as say for example, N 2 O 5 again nitrogen pentoxide, but here the reaction is different N 2 O 5 to produce N O 2 and N O 3 ok. So, N O 2 is N 2 O 5 is there which will produce N O 2 and N O 3, but then if it is a unimolecular reaction this is not this is not uh, visualized ok unimolecular reaction to unnecessary why it will decompose ok. To do this decomposition it must collide with some other species may be it is the same molecule or may be something else whatever may be. So, when it collides with sufficient uh, energy then only what will happen to this molecule it will go to some excited state ok. And when it will go to excited state we know that uh, um, excited molecules cannot stay there for long time. So, it will in the second step this is the first step and in the second step it will the excited molecule excited to show the excited molecule we use the star here. So, the, the excited molecule will decompose into NO2 and NO3. So, what we have seen that mole unimolecular reaction is um, following a bimolecular reaction. So, first step is here two things are there N2O5 and M. So, it is a bimolecular reaction and then this is a unimolecular reaction that is why it is written it involves a single uh, reactant and usually uh, occurs after at least one bimolecular step this is very important that I have explained here. Now, if if this is the um, thing happening the N 2 5 molecule is an excited state and high energy. So, it dissociates in the second step it is clear. So, if it is like this then rate is what rate is the this is the rate expression rate is it is the rate constant and N 2 5 that. So, in, in it is in the it is clear that second step is unimolecular and has the rate expression like this ok. So, according to this if you forget about this if this is the step unimolecular reaction if you consider then what will be the rate expression rate expression is k into N 2 O 5 uh, concentration of N 2 O 5. Now, here it is a gas phase gas phase reaction. So, um, it is colliding with another molecule or it may be colliding with something else also, but in liquid solvents the elementary reaction involve the encounter of solute species with another with one another. So, in solvent system it is possible that two ions or two molecules or whatever they can encounter. Although the solvent molecule may affect the reaction sometimes solvent molecule can affect the reaction, but we already we have learnt that when it is solvent molecule then it will not come in the rate expression. So, uh, accordingly you have to write the rate expression. Now, uh, now, bimolecular reaction it is most common bimolecular reaction is most common we already we have seen the reaction of HI uh, decomposition of HI to hydrogen and iodine or we have seen the uh, com, uh, H, the reaction of hydrogen and iodine to form the hydroiodic acid both are bimolecular reaction this is very common Mo, many reactions are bimolecular reactions. Say for example, you know this the, this is also gas phase reaction NO with ozone it is forming NO2 and oxygen. Here it is expected that the rate of collision is proportional to the product of the concentration of NO and O3 because there are two species here. So, it is very simple to write the rate expression it is nothing but um, K into concentration of NO into concentration of O3. Molecularity is often used to indicate the number of molecules that take part in the elementary reaction. For elementary reaction to tell the molecularity is very easy that much we understand ok. Now, uh, now the tar molecular reactions tar means 3 
termolecular reaction it is also not very common. I visualize in this way say for example, two, two people are um, running in a particular corridor. Okay. So, two people when running there is enough chance that they will collide with each other, but if there are three people running it is very uh, it is not very easy to think that at a particular time three of them will come at a particular spot to collide. Okay, that is nothing but the termolecular reaction. So, that is why it is uh, said that termolecular reactions are uh, not very common. Okay. Uh, so, what is the example? For example, recombination of iodine atoms in gas phase to form iodine molecules. This is this is the example uh, we have taken. Okay. In this process, a huge amount of energy is released and it causes the iodine molecule to dissociate immediately. So, what is the reaction? Recombination of iodine atom I plus I giving iodine. Okay. This is also a gas phase reaction iodine I and I giving I 2. So, that, that is also a gas phase reaction, but when it, when it, uh, it gives iodine then in this process a huge amount of energy is released and it causes the iodine molecule to dissociate immediately. That means, the reaction will not occur. Okay. I plus I giving I 2 this reaction theoretically is possible, but it will not occur because once it is formed then it, uh, it releases a huge amount of energy and that energy will, uh, will cause them to fly apart. That means, uh, reaction will not occur. However, in presence of an inert gas sufficient high concentration of inert gas, if there is uh, some inert gas present like argon, then what will happen? Then the argon will take out some of the energy, excess energy okay? and then the recombination is possible. So, argon has taken away some of the excess energy and then what will happen? The reaction now uh, can occur and it is nothing but a termolecular reaction. See for example, I plus I plus argon will produce the iodine and then if this happens then what should be the rate expression? The rate expression will be k into i to the power square i concentration to the power square into argon concentration. So, an interesting observation uh, is that the recombination of iodine atoms occur readily in solution uh, like it is gas phase reaction and it is um, it is uh, shown here that argon is necessary or any inert gas is necessary. So, that excess energy will be taken away, but if the reaction is done in some uh, in some uh, solution then what will happen then uh, this excess energy this uh, solvent can take out and then the reaction will occur. The reaction is bimolecular and the rate expression is rate is equals to k into k is this is nothing but the specific rate constant i concentration to the power square means i concentration to the power 2. Okay. So, so termolecular reaction is possible somewhere it is possible, but it is not very common like the bimolecular reaction. Now, chain reaction this is many many environmental uh, uh, segments we see that chain reaction is going on. Okay. So, here uh, what is chain reaction? In the chain reaction the speciality of chain reaction is that it occurs through various steps. Okay. First step is initiation then propagation and then termination and during these steps initiation and propagation free radicals and which are nothing but intermediates are produced, uh, produced and finally, they will uh, uh, in the termin termination step they will uh, they will combine and they will terminate the reaction. So, what is uh, so let us see an example for example, methane methane in gas phase reacting with fluorine that is also gas and then it is producing CH 3 F and H F okay. all this is a gas phase reaction. Okay. Now, if you means this is very simple things to uh, show or to, um, to see, but the is it occurring like this in a single step or it is uh, occurring through multiple steps that is the question because we are talking about the mechanism of a reaction. Now, although 
it should be a single step if it is a single step reaction then we can tell easily that it is a bimolecular reaction but actually it occurs to a series of steps such such, um, such as um, ch4 plus fluorine this is the first step which is called initiation in the initiation step you can see that uh, methyl radical is generated and another radical is generated fluorine dot so, how the radicals are written this is the dot that means, um, free radical that means, it has uh, unpaired ele uh, electron. Okay. Now, these, these, um, uh, these free radicals are very reactive and uh, they can react with something else again to form another free radical okay. and this way you see this is the initiation step this means initiation of formation um, by the formation of some uh, free radicals then propagation propagation means there are many steps where where uh, uh, where other free radicals are being generated okay these are all propagation step step 2 step 3 now you see that in the step 4 you see the free radicals are uh, are uh, combined recombined and then it is producing some compound. So, here there is no more free radical left this way it will go on continuously and, uh, uh, and um, uh, that means, uh, uh, continuously producing more and more free radicals and uh, uh, it takes place continuously in various steps. So, um, the, the important thing about it that is that the chain reaction between uh, this here uh, methane and fluorine proceeds at a constant rate and why because these um, propagation steps consume and produce they, cons they produce as well as they consume the intermediates these free radicals are called intermediates okay? and the concentration of the reactive intermediates remain approximately constant that is why the rate is also constant. Okay. These are determined by the rates of chain initiation and chain termination. You will see this when I will discuss about the, um, the radioactivity then you will see this type of thing is happening for, for radioactive elements. Their free radical is not generated, but there are some daughter elements are generated and you will see that radioactive equilibrium. Okay. And so, the, this is the chain reaction. Now, chain reaction you know the, I told you that in nature also it is happening. It is a very um, interesting thing that ozone layer, you know ozone layer it is present in the stratosphere, naturally it is produced okay, in the stratosphere. How naturally it is produced? Um, by this uh, series of reactions like in the uh, stratosphere there is oxygen and then high energy uh, photon is coming and it is breaking it into O and O, you see the such a high energy it is 200 nanometer from the thermosphere. Uh, so, in the thermosphere it is happening. Now, this O is combining with oxygen to form the ozone and it is happening in stratosphere. Now, ozone you see uh, it can uh, it can uh, uh, means uh, it is excited molecule you see star. So, star is coming down to the ground state by, com by colliding with something M m is anything ok. So, it is coming to the ground state and this is the natural formation. So, these three steps I will I have shown the natural formation. Now, uh, this one you forget it is nothing to nothing related to this one, but uh, this is a reaction that happens in a lab ok. Ozone can form the uh, oxygen, but it is a slow reaction. Now, ozone can uh, can react with photon, but you can see here this is the light of 200 nanometer, this is the light wavelength uh, 200 to 350 nanometer means higher uh, higher wavelength. Okay. So, energy is less, okay. here energy is more. So, what is happening ozone uh, forms uh, oxygen and O. o okay. So, natural depletion this is the natural. So, formation and depletion is going on naturally to maintain this concentration of ozone in the this is steady state. So, this is the molecules per liter. 10 to the power 15 molecules of ozone per liter this is maintained. So, this was maintained and it is protecting us from the UV light. We all know that uh, uh, the ozone layer is a protective layer uh, it is uh, uh, protecting us from the UV light. Okay. Now, what is happening due to some man made activities 
man made activities this ozone layer is getting depleted. How it is going on? These are nit nitrogen oxides NO nitric oxide supersonic jets it is coming and then it is reacting with ozone to form some uh, intermediates. Here it is not free radical, but it is some intermediate and that intermediate again um, is uh, combining with um, oxygen to form uh, the uh, NO and uh, O2. So, you see the intermediate you have to find out something that intermediate uh, final reaction it is not there, but it can it can go on uh, as a chain reaction and uh, finally, you see ozone is uh, decomposed to oxygen. So, this is the man made activity that is going on. Another man made activity is that chlorofluorocarbon you know from the refrigerators from many sprays chlorofluorocarbon is coming um, and then it is reacting with photon normal light and then it is producing the free radical chlorine free radical and this free radical can, uh, can destroy the ozone uh, through a series of chain reactions. Okay. Uh, series of reactions which is nothing but chain reaction we have just learned. So, this is the reason that ozone layer is depleted and it is making ozone holes in many places um, and then it is the UV light is coming to the to the earth and it is uh, creating lot of hazard for our health. Okay. That is why it is so important and the mechanism of ozone layer depletion was first um, uh, described by three scientists and Nobel prize 1995 Nobel prize was given for this. Uh, for the understanding of the mechanism of ozone layer depletion. So, this is in the nature it is happening and uh, this is nothing but the chain reaction. Similarly, we also tell that uh, photochemical smog formation we know that in the industrial areas uh, brown hedge is formed which uh, irritates our eyes and it is very it creates breathing problem that is also like a uh, cyclic ch chain type of uh, chain reaction. Uh, and it is producing uh, NO2 several types of um, nitrogen gases NOx and um, uh, it is a very dangerous thing. So, there also if you go through that photochemical smog formation then you will see that uh, this type of reactions chain reactions are going on. So, uh, so uh, the references that uh, I have written here you can uh, have uh, all those things that I discussed you can he, you can see it in a uh, more elaborative way. So, you can read these uh, three books there are three books written here process chemistry and water and uh, for water and wastewater treatment that I already mentioned in my uh, earlier uh, lectures and uh, this is a book very nice book and uh, P.K. Datta and Datta and that. Uh, so, you can uh, read these three books. Now, um, uh, th this is the conclusion. So, in this lecture uh, what we have covered we have uh, discussed about the molecularity and elementary process. We have also uh, explained that uh, what is unimolecular reaction, bimolecular reaction, termolecular reaction and uh, also chain reaction that have been discussed um, here in this um, lecture. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much.